morning, everybody, and welcome to service this morning. Wherever you are, wherever you're watching, I hope that you're very comfortable and you're sitting maybe in your slippers, and I hope you've got that brew in your hand so you can sit and enjoy. But don't forget to put your brew down before you sing. So we're going to start off with me reading you Psalm 103. Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my innermost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and not forget all of his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion? Who sacrifices your desires for good things? so that your youth will be renewed like the eagles. The Lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed. He made known to his ways to, Mo made known his ways to Moses, his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbour his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is the love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the, the Lord has compassion on you, those who fear him, for he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone and its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him, and his righteousness with the children's children, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven, and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, all his works, everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul.
breath. Lord, we come from various backgrounds this morning. As we sit in our own little bubbles in our homes. But even though we're meeting in our homes, we are coming as one family. Joining together at this time of worship. To say thank you for the times you have been there sustaining us in our times of need. You have given hope when times have been darkened by the coronavirus and we have felt bereft. Lord, we come just as we are from our own bubbles and spaces this morning to bring praise to a God who can move mountains and bring peace out of fear. You are an amazing, all-powerful God who reigns in the depths of our whole beings. During this time of uncertainty, you have been our guide, our hope, and our peace. Lord, remove the scales from our eyes so that we can truly see you in all your glory, walking with us on the path of life. Help us, Lord, to be more like you and never to hide you on a bookshelf and just take you off when we're coming to church on a Sunday. Forgive us, Lord, for the times when we haven't always put you first in our lives. But thank you that we know that we have been forgiven through the sacrifice and blood of Jesus Christ. Be with us, Lord, this morning, speak into all our lives as we journey through this time of Lent. This time together, open our ears as we listen to your voice. Thank you, Lord, that we know we have held you. You, we, you have held us in your outstretched arms. Help us to know you more in the weeks ahead and to reach out to those who are sad and downcast. We magnify your name this morning, Lord, as we do every morning. We magnify your holy name. Come, Lord Jesus, we are here for you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us join together in that, that prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
New Testament reading is from Mark chapter 2, verses 13 to 22. Once again, Jesus went out beside the lake. A large crowd came to him, and he began to teach them. As he walked along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, Jesus told him, and Levi got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. When the teachers of the law, who were Pharisees, saw him eating with the sinners and the tax collectors, they asked his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said to them, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Now John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting. Some people came and asked Jesus, How is it that John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees are fasting, but yours are not? Jesus answered, How can the guest of the bridegroom fast? while he is with them. They cannot so long as they have him with them. But the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, and on that day they will fast. No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth to an old garment. If he does, the new piece will pull away from the old. And no one pours new wine into old wineskins. If he does, the wine will burst the skins, and both the wine and the wineskins will be ruined. No, he pours new wine into new wineskins. Thanks be for God for this reading. Amen. Who do we follow? Who do we follow this morning? Who do we follow at any time? That is what the, the, um, the theme of this service is this morning, is who do we follow? During this lockdown period, have you ever just sat and pondered? I often have. I've often sat quietly in the conservatory. No book, no nothing. Just a cup in my hand of tea or coffee. And I've sat in the quietness. And I've listened to what God has to say. In this time, in this strange time of lockdown. I've pondered about many things. I've even been taken back to my teenage years and things I used to do when I heard myself saying, who do I follow? Who do I follow today? Who did I follow then all those years ago? You see, I may have been gone to church as a child, but I didn't really know Jesus. I wasn't following him. I was going for that little book to put a stamp in. And that's what I was thinking that day. And it took me back to when I just got married to Colin. We haven't been married long. And when I was preparing for this morning's service, my thoughts took me back into a time when I used to be a, a real a, a follower of Cliff Richard. I used to idolise him, if I can say it that way. There was a time when we had two tickets to go and see him at the Fiesta, if anybody can remember that, in Stockton. And he was coming there. We were just in our early 20s and Colin had got these two tickets as a surprise. And then what happened? He went and broke his back in a works accident. Now, some of you might be saying this morning, you didn't go, did you? Well, what do you think? Yes, I did. I went with my sister. Colin said it was all right. If he couldn't do anything, he was laid in bed flat on the board in those days. You see, when you see some, when you, when you follow somebody, when you follow, truly follow somebody, you want to find out all about them. And in the bygone days, you used to join a fan club. I'm sure many of you listening to this broadcast this morning can remember that. You were in some fan club. You want to get to know how the ones you follow got started. 
Where are they coming to? Where are they going? Then I got to thinking, how do people get to know Jesus? How do people get to know Jesus and how do they follow him? How do they get to know how to follow him? You see, they don't read about him because they don't go to church or they haven't got a Bible. And yet they judge him. You often hear people using God's name in vain. Now I can take any, any swear language whatsoever. I don't like it and I don't approve of it. But I can take it. But listening to some people taking the Lord's name in vain, it just cuts me to the core. And I've often had words with people and then ran. You see, if you were invited, if you were to invite a famous person into your home to share a meal with you, who would it be? Who would you invite? It could be someone from the past or present. It could be like the Queen. It could be Billy Graham or Charles Stanley. Or what about John Wesley? You see, imagine the conversations you could have. I think my list of questions would be very long. I'd probably be exhausting people by asking them. But just think about it. The encouragement would be overwhelming that you would get from them. But you see, there's one person who is much greater than any of these people I've just mentioned, who invites us to be with him this morning and every morning. Just imagine what you could learn from him. You could, you could learn how the world was created by him. But most of all, you get to know who God is and what he's done for you and what he's done for me. The one who called you this morning is Jesus Christ. The one who wants to share his life with you. The one who says this morning, follow me. We're in Lent. It's a good time. It's a good time to step behind and follow him. You see, these two words are very small, aren't they? Follow me. But they're very mighty too. How many times have you heard that in your life? Follow me. Maybe at work. If you start a new job, your trainer might say, come on, follow me, I'll show you what you need to know. You see, we have a dog at home and she follows me around everywhere I go and sometimes she's a bit of a nuisance because every time I, I turn around, she's there and I fall over her. But now she's got crafty because she knows when, when I go through the door, she brings my slippers to me and she plants them down. But she'll only do that if she gets a treat. But she's following. Even a dog can follow. You see, during this pandemic, people are fearful of now and of the future. Jesus is right in the middle of this pandemic and he's right in there with us. He knows our inner fears and our concerns for the future. But he still says, follow me. You see, people's lives have been turned upside down and it's not just the, the older generation. It's right from the young children at school. The ones that's going to university, to college. The ones that's looking after us on the front lines. The whole world has been turned up down in people's lives. Some people become confused and anxious, wondering when it's all going to end. But we have a God. We have a God this morning and every morning who can supply our needs. But people find it hard to follow him. To follow Jesus, you'll have to be willing to leave everything behind. 
and start a new life with him. Everything. He is willing to come into our lives. See, Jesus was a homeless person. He carried no possessions. But what he did carry saves people's lives. It would give them a brand new identity. Have you ever heard in the past or even maybe in today's as you've been walking around, whatever they want, whatever they've got, I want. Somebody's been very cheerful and lively. I've heard it often. Whatever they want, have their I want. There is something about them that's different. I want people to say that about me. Whatever Doreen's got, I want it. You see, wherever Jesus went, there would be crowds. The choke to hear what he had, had to say. And on the shore of Galilee, his pulpit was a boat. And yet he preached the same message. When I was thinking about that, it put my sh a shiver down my spine. It got me a little bit excited when I was thinking about Jesus walking on the shores of Galilee. I may have stepped in his footprints. He said to fishermen, yes, fishermen, follow me. And they left everything and followed, not knowing where they were going, not knowing where they were going to end up. You see, when all this lockdown is over, we can come back into our comfy churches, into our comfy boat, and give God our thankfulness for all the blessings and love he has shown us during this crazy time. But he'll still be saying, follow me. You can't stay in that boat, that comfy boat. You've got to step out of it and you've got to follow me. As many people know, following Jesus isn't always easy. There's a cost. And sometimes that cost is hard to bear. I know because I, I'm counting the cost. The journey Jesus calls us to, your life can end up in places that you never dreamt of or thought you could even handle. But when he puts, it, puts you outside your comfort zone, he is there with you. He never leaves you alone. He's there side by side. Just like he was with the disciples, as they came alongside many conflicts with the religious leaders, Jesus was there. Jesus can put you into all sorts of situations when we follow him. We can't pick and choose where he sends us. You see, there have been times over the recent two years, three years, that Jesus has put me into places where I would rather not be. But he's put me there for a reason. He opened up my heart. When I was sat thinking about things, I was thinking of the food banks, the food banks in Middlesbrough, where one morning my heart was broken when I saw a young lady walking with no shoes on her feet. Desperate. That's Jesus. He's there in that food bank. The street angels that we hear about going round the streets, Middlesbrough, Stockton, Thornaby, talking to people or sitting in shelters. You see, I feel as if I've gone round in a circle to where I am now. But knowing God is a never ending circle. There's no beginning and there's no end. I can remember quite vividly how our lunch club at Great Ayrton had £200 to help a charity. And I went home 
and I got the yellow pages out and I got a pin and I went round and round and I stuck the pin in the book and it went on to advert where it said tickle the taste buds and it told you about them feeding the homeless in Middlesbrough. It was a charity in Middlesbrough feeding the homeless and those living on the margins of society. Now I phoned that lady up and I told her what we were doing at Great Ayton and I said we had this £200 that we'd like to give to her charity and she broke down and cried on the phone. She said, you can't understand how much that means to me this morning. This is a God incident. She said, our boiler went about three weeks ago, the ones that we make the tea with, and we've been boiling pans of water and carrying them through to make tea. We've been looking for a boiler, but the boilers are too, are too expensive. When she got this £200 from us, she went up to Washingtonfelders in Stockton, where she'd been looking for one. And the guy in there said to her, aren't you the lady that wanted a boiler? And she said, yes, but we can't afford one just yet. We're still saving. He said, well, I've got one on the shelf that's been a, a demonstration. He said, I could let you have it for 200 pound. Now, isn't that God? Isn't that God working in these days? These days we're living in. You see, Jesus says, he keeps saying, follow me. You just can't choose where you want to go. Because if, if we do, Jesus can alter. It can totally alter our direction. Going into Tickle Your Taste Buds took me so far out of my comfort zone. I can't tell you how far. But I was with people. I was with people that wanted to sit and talk. People that lived on the streets, people that told you the, the life stories. And here this morning we read about a person taken from the normal way of life into the unknown. A tax collector called Levi, who worked for the Roman government. He was despised by many and he was lining his own pockets by charging more than he should for the taxes. His booth, his booth was in the best position to collect tolls from wagons coming in with supplies to come into Capernaum. Levi was classed as an outcast, along with all the other tax collectors. They weren't allowed in the synagogues and they weren't allowed in courts because they were so, they were considered so corrupt. You see, I feel that there's a lot of whys in this little bit of scripture, but very exciting answers. Why would Levi leave his boot straight away when Jesus said, follow me? If he was classed as so corrupt and making a good living from his own people, why would he leave all that behind? when he knew he would never get a job like it again if he walked away. You see, maybe Jesus had made him feel guilty or ashamed of how he was treating people. Or maybe with Le Levi's booth being near the shop that he'd heard Jesus preaching many, many times. Or maybe he'd heard of miracles that Jesus has been doing. You see, to leave everything behind would have been a big thing for Levi. I believe Jesus may have told him that he could become an apostle or a disciple full time if he followed Jesus. Now I can imagine Levi would have been overjoyed. He'd have been bouncing around. Just like when I give our grandchildren chocolate and I bounce off the walls. Levi put a great big party on for tax collectors and sinners and they were having a whale of a time. Then in walks Jesus. Can you imagine people talking? Have you heard the latest? Jesus is in Levi's house. He is mixing with sinners. He is eating with them. 
But you see, Jesus doesn't look at people's outward appearance. He looks at their souls. He sees their inners, how they are inside. We don't take people and put labels on Don't we take people and put labels on them today? We do. Don't our children have to keep up with others on the fashion? Don't they have to have certain name trainers and track suits to be in the right area? You see, Jesus doesn't look at labels because there isn't any in heaven. Jesus sits among us, the ones who, who were despised in those days and today neglected by the society. Jesus, the mighty God of all creation, dined with sinners. You might say, well, why was he there in Levi's house? Because he wanted them to know him. He knew they had very little access to any teaching. These sinners were drawn to Jesus and he turns, to, he turns no one away, does he? He tells us in John 6, 37. You see, Jesus met Levi face to face and performed a different kind of healing, a healing of the heart. Levi had everything that he wanted and more, but inside he was a miserable walking dead man but we couldn't cover up who he really was. When Jesus met Levi at his boom, he was full of compassion and reached out to him. Jesus tells us right here, wherever we are listening this morning, wherever you are listening to Jesus this morning, Jesus is a people person full of love and compassion. Jesus wanted to give him a new life. You see, no one pours old wine into new wineskins. People who make their own wine today, they'll probably tell you all this. They'll probably tell you that you put new wine into cleansed jars. Just at the right time when Levi was at his lowest, God was ready to do something for him. And it's exactly the same today. When we're at our lowest, we meet Jesus. Jesus can bring us up from anything that we're going through. Jesus still is calling the most unlikely people today to follow him. Jesus calls us to heal us, to make us whole, to transform us, from sinners into children of God. You see, Levi started out as a tax collector, but became Matthew, an apostle of Jesus, one of the disciples who wrote the first book in the New Testament. As we travel through Lent, who are we going to follow? Who are we going to follow? The world or the one who gave his life for you and for me? Follow me, he said, and I did. Tax collecting never made me popular, but it put a roof over my head and bread on the table. Bitter bread because grabbed and grudged. He invited me to become no longer a dog in the, sinner, in the manger, but host at the feast. He came right under my roof, sharing my bread and showing me how to share with all the rest. Follow me, he said, and I did. Let us all grow new wine skins with an ever ending thirst for the new wine of the gospel of Jesus Christ during this walk through Lent with Jesus. Amen.
Let us pray. God of love, hear the cry of those who yearn for love. Fractured families, broken homes, neglected, unwanted, alone. God of justice, hear the cry of those who yearn for justice, persecuted and oppressed, exploited, ill-treated, broken. God of peace, hear the cry of those who yearn for peace in battle zones and broken states, frightened, fearful, anxious. God of healing, hear the cry of those who yearn for healing, physical and spiritual, hurting, weakened and depressed. God of mercy, hear the cry of those who yearn for mercy, convicted, in need of your grace, contrite, humble, bowed down. Lord, hear all those prayers we've brought to you. We also, Father, this morning, bring all those in our own family circuit who are not well at the moment, all those who are feeling the this coronavirus and what it's doing to families. Let your power, Lord, this morning surround them. We pray for all those on the front line who put themselves forward to help others. Father, they're tired, they're worn out, mentally and physically. Father, we thank them for what they do for us. We thank them for this vaccine that's being rolled out. Lord, all those people in different places, as we met yesterday at Corby Newham in the car park. Father, for people doing the tests, for anyone that wants one, giving up of their time to help others. Be with them all, Lord. Take care of them. We pray for Andrew as he works tirelessly throughout the circuit at this time. We pray, Lord, that you will be with him wherever he goes. Give him a time for working, but also a time for resting. We pray for Mandy too, for all the work that she does in walking besides Andrew. Father, we pray for them both and just ask that you wrap your arms around them, Lord, and give them that uh, sense of peace. We pray for all those who have lost loved ones. May your healing touch be felt by them. And Father, we pray for ourselves. We pray that we we'll never forget what you've done for us, Lord, as we walk through this Lent season. Lord, let us walk with you. Let us feel your touch. Let us give our lives to you, Lord, as we walk with you. Let us renew, let us all renew as you call us, Lord, to follow you. You are our hands and our feet. Help us, Lord, during this time. Give us peace in each family that this service represents this morning and in the wider community, Lord. We ask that you, your power will flow through from Hutton Rugby on this circuit, Lord, all the way through like a stream to Great Ayton and branch off into little places where we have churches. Lord, and touch each person this morning. Touch each person with your love and compassion. In Jesus' name. Amen.
And now the blessing. May the blessing of God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit be with each one of us as we travel this road together. Amen. <laughs>